I'll give everyone a minute to jump in. Can you guys hear me okay? Don't forget to like wherever that is on your, on your screen. So I'm going to get started. I'm actually in um, Nashville right now. I'm covering the SEC tournament for um, our Alabama site. So I went from Syracuse to Boston to Greensboro to Nashville now in like nine days or something. Um, so I'm a little wiped out. And I should have warned you guys I was coming up here because – invariably there was going to be breaking news because that's the thing that always happens with this. Um, you know, basically what I was told from sources over the last couple of days was sort of 50, 50, whether Josh would stay even after they won the first game and, and, and Greensboro um, that, you know, Jay was Jay Bath, a new AD at Georgia tech, sharp guy had a plan and had contingencies, right? Like based on whether or not he was getting the type of interest he expected in, the, in a job possibility. He'd been putting out feelers for quite some time. Um, you know, no one really knew. I, I think even, you know, Ken and I um, were talking about this in Greensboro with some other people. It was just sort of, everyone sort of had a different opinion about it and what was going to happen. So, um, you know, it was a tough tough day obviously for Josh and his staff and, and the players that played for him and you know obviously an exciting day for fans that are ready for something more and, and obviously you know I, I told Josh this myself like the expectations for the program had the, the lack of success with the program has, has been crippling um, from Paul Hewitt's last year up until now it's just not been what needs to be when Clemson's been more successful you than you during a stretch. It's a big problem. A school like Georgia Tech that should be very strong in basketball. Um, and there are a variety of reasons why why things ended up the way they did. Josh inherited a, a straight up rebuild with basically three players, um, two of which were probably CC caliber guys, and, and one. And then the wheels came off. You had the Ron Bell stuff and all these other things that were. Someone control, some out of his control, D Lab doing what he did. All of those things just sort of snowballed, and most coaches would have been fired. And he did a good enough job to, to keep himself employed during that stretch. But I think the damage from that time is ultimately part of what did him in, along with the lack of NIL and the lack of NIL support, and the fact that he didn't go advocate for himself to get what he needed to, to be successful. Really didn't start talking about that until it was too late to do anything about it. They needed to be raising money. You know, they needed to have money in place a year ago at this time. And, and it just wasn't there. 
So you end up in a situation where they take freebies and Javon Franklin and Lance Terry, who are guys that just came from lower levels to, to try to play at the ACC level. Both of them did a good job. Javon obviously turned into a very good player down the stretch, but it wasn't enough. And, and ultimately you're, you're judged by your wins and losses. I'm judged by my business. We're all judged by something and, and what we do for a living. And Josh was judged by the lack of success on the court consistently. You know, even in the the two year run they had that was pretty good with Jose and and Moses and them, the first of those two years where they started to get good, they had a lot of issues that year because Jose got hurt and was struggling. And then they were had a postseason ban. And then COVID hit and all that stuff, right? Then the second year they win and then COVID takes Moses out and they drew a bad seating. And, you know, there's just never kind of got any momentum. And ultimately, that's that's what killed Josh Passner as Georgia Tech's head coach. And, you know, I, it's funny. Um, Josh is a classic guy. Josh, I just sent him a text that, hey, man, I'm sorry you lost your job. And he sent me back a really nice text about my family and thanking me for everything. That's just the kind of guy he is. He is a First class individual. You can see how this is being handled so differently than even when Brian Gregory left. And Brian was a great guy, but Josh, people really like him. So it, that part of it's been difficult, I think, for everyone involved. That you know, I think people are just sad that it didn't work out. And so now it's time to turn the page and and focus on Georgia Tech needs to focus on getting the right coach this time, not getting like your fifth choice, your tenth choice, your seventeenth choice in Josh's case almost. Um, and, and having a move, and, and my understanding was the only way that Jay Pat was going to make this move was if he had who he wanted to hire in place. And so that gets us to, you know, kind of what I talked about on the website, the couple of targets that I expect them to go after. Obviously, Pat Kelsey's name is really out there. Um, he wanted the job many years ago. Would have been interesting to have hired him back then. He's done a great job at, at Winthrop and then at College of Charleston. Um, you know, a little bit of a character um, in some ways, but I, I think you could use that a little bit, a very different coaching persona from Josh Bassner. Um, so it, it'll be interesting to see if that's if that's what Jay Bat has in mind. The thing with Jay is Jay's been very, 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 very tight-lipped about what he's doing, where he's going with this, um, who he lets into the circle to even know kind of what's going on. Uh, there was a joke with somebody that, that works – um, at Georgia Tech that they thought that I would know before they did um, about what was going on. And even Josh and them, they all figured I would find out before they did. Um, to Jay's credit, he kept it pretty quiet. I got a text about maybe like 90 seconds before it went, um, like before Goodman and Brazil and Rothstein, all three of them, I think, tweeted about it. Um and had like no heads up to even like check it and was sort of just like, Hey, is this, I was texting back with somebody. Um, and, and was waiting to hear back when, when all three of those guys started tweeting about it. And I was like, Oh crap. And obviously I had the story ready in the admin too. Um, so yeah, so that's kind of where we're at with that. Um, what I'll do is I'll, I'll go through the questions here on the, on the website a little bit here. And then, um, and then I'll take some questions and chat too if people want to want to jump in on those. Um, let's see. Oh Lord! Apparently, everyone voted no for the hot tub. By the way, um, and I'm not joking. There's literally a hot tub in my hotel room. I got upgraded to the hot tub room, uh, which. You have to like clean before you can actually use it. All right. So someone asked about keeping the core of players together, which would be Miles Kelly, Lance Terry, Kyle Sturdivant, Davon Smith, and um, Debo Coleman, Jalen Moore, sort of that group. Um, no one knows. I, I think that in this time, especially in the age of the portal and, and guys being able to move around with coaching changes and stuff, I don't know. Kyle uh, it will be a real interesting one because he came on at the end of the season, but that's he sort of had two little bursts of play um, during his time and has been kind of up and down. 
what does he do? Um, you know, Miles Kelly's a guy that they were preparing an IL stuff for already. So I expect that um, whoever's hired will make an attempt to keep Miles around and Debo and whoever else that they like. Again, systems factor into all this stuff, how you want to play, who you're bringing in, how much you want to clean house. Uh, you know, Davon and Kyle have burned their one-time transfers, but I think because Josh got fired, that may give them something. Terry as well. Terry hasn't graduated. Um, I think Kyle might be, and Davon certainly is not. So I don't know where that stands with those guys. I'd have to do a little more research on that. I'm, I just don't know off the, the top of it. Uh, next question. When do you think Baton New Passner had to go to Louisville loss? I think when they went on that nine – game stretch where it fell apart. You had the Miami win. There were a couple of like weird moments. I saw um, AJ Palumbo, who's the number two, Jay's number two guy at one of the games early in the season in ACC play before the wheels really came off of things. And he looked like really like bummed out about how bad the crowd was for one of the games. Um, he was just standing there. I was standing at the concession thing, getting something to eat. And I was just watching him stare kind of off into the distance of the crowd and it just seemed like they were like really bummed out that there were not more people there um, for an ACC game. And I wish I could remember what game that was. Um, it was after the Miami game, but it's, you know, disinterest is, is a big problem. Not drawing is a big problem. And the reality is that they haven't drawn particularly well going really since they moved into McCamish, like, it's not been the same as it was the first couple of years I covered Georgia Tech with Hewitt before they changed and moved out of the old AMC. Uh, let's see. What else? Obviously, people want to know, uh, have I had a chance to talk to Josh? I texted with him. I'll have a conversation if you got it. I mean, I could maybe get him to do an exit interview when things calm down a little bit. Um, I, I'm not big on... I'd like to give people a little bit of breathing room before I do that, like kind of thing or have any kind of intense conversation about it. I do think Josh will be successful somewhere. This is a difficult job. This is one of the harder jobs at the, at the high end, um, especially if you're not like connected in Atlanta and, and don't know how to garner the support that you need to, to be successful. And I think that's something that needs to be pushed into the equation here a little bit as well. You know, I think Josh's other big kind of issue was he started out with a really good staff and then they kept losing guys. They lost D-Lab because he was did something idiotic. They lost um, Travars Hardy to a head coaching job. That was really a killer on um, losing Hardy. He was a really good coach. And then, you, and then they, you know, lost Rev this past year. And I think there were some growing pains there. I think he would have really helped Javon had he been around for another year, but he wanted to get another shot at head coaching. Rev um, seemed to really struggle with his recruiting aspect and, and player evaluations. And a lot of the recruiting kind of fell on, on Josh and Julian Schwartz and they, they needed more than that. And that was something I think Josh didn't know how to delegate there enough was the recruiting aspect of it. And I think it bit him there as well. They needed, to find a guy to to help recruit that Atlanta area harder. And that was supposed to be Anthony Wilkins and just never really materialized for whatever reason with him. He didn't seem to be like super active on social media and, you know, kids liked him, but just not, didn't move the needle in the way that you would need like a CY or Jonas Haynes or some of the other, other guys Amir have. So I think that, that that hurt Georgia Tech a lot as well. Uh, I do know Ryan Bamford. Someone asked me about the story about him backing out of the UMass job. I've not talked to Ryan about that. I haven't talked to Ryan in a long time other than just, you know, some random Twitter interactions. But um, it was funny. I almost had a conversation with him um, about Frank Martin because someone was asking me about him for another job. And that was kind of a weird deal there, too. Apparently, Frank Martin hasn't signed his contract with UMass. So they've had some different weird coaching stuff go on at UMass. Will Georgia Tech be able to keep Blue Kane? Would any of the potential hires not want him? I think Blue's a guy that anyone will want. He fits into a lot of different systems, can move the ball, can play 
multiple positions kind of in the backcourt one, two, um, can guard up to three probably um, in certain defenses. Just great basketball IQ guy. Someone will want him. The issue is going to be whether or not he, they can hold on to him. And I think that's going to depend entirely on the hire. He was he picked Georgia Tech because of the staff and, and the fit. And they got him over a lot of big schools. So there's going to be a lot of people kind of knocking on his door. The one sort of advantage right now for Georgia Tech is a lot of the schools that might go after Blue are going to be hard focused on the portal right now. So I'll be curious to see what the actual market looks like. Because a lot of it, there's still quite a few high school kids floating around. Do, 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 do. I like the thought of Amir Abdur Rahim. What kind of staff could he get with him? His inexperience would definitely be. He would need a strong group of guys. Yeah, Amir seems like he. This is like two years too early for him. He just and they went from one win to five to thirteen to twenty six this year. That's a little bit lean on the experience part of it. Um, I feel like you need – they need someone with more coaching experience. That's the one thing that, that's that been very true in the ACC. You can't just throw someone in the deep end and make them that coach. The great example of that right now is Hubert Davis at North Carolina. Look at how much he's struggling with a team that is, you know, top three in talent at least in the league, right? Like I don't think anyone would argue that. He cannot manage that roster, and they thought they could plug Pete Hansen and and win, and they can't. They they're going to go from being a number one team preseason to being a team that is a top seed in the NIT. That's ridiculous with the level of talent and the amount of money they're spending. I mean, Armando, Armando Baycott. I heard this at the ACC um, tournament. Armando Baycott makes apparently allegedly $1.2 million in NIL money. Think about that for a minute. He's talking about coming back for another year because he's not draftable, like we're not a first round pick. He will make more money playing at North Carolina under NIL than he will playing in in the G League or in Israel or wherever he would have ended up uh, because he doesn't really have a a definitive game for the NBA. that's crazy. And that's where you get into the have and have not the pieces of this, right? Like, you know, I talk about Pitt all the time. They went all in on trying to win with Capel and it sort of has worked, not really, but they have a team that's 23 years old on average. Like that's a bunch of dudes who should be playing in Europe and the G league and probably mostly in Europe. And that does make a difference, man. Like they've won some games they probably shouldn't have just because of how experienced their team is. And they even lost one of their top players and were still good because they had built depth because they went and spent like money to get to like seven deep. So, you know, that piece of this has to be put into the equations because there's sort of two ways to do NIL. You can do it like Carolina does where you just spend a lot of money or what Pitt did a little bit. But the reality is the way it should work at Georgia Tech is it's a lot like what Brent Key's doing with football. It's a retention slash – retention slash um, reward system, which is what it's supposed to be more based on. Like it's not based on just projections and, Hey, you're the, you know, four star rivals, top 75 quarterback. We're going to pay you X. You have to actually play like, you know, they're not just going to throw money on kids to, to, to come to school. They're not doing pay for play. They're doing play based on performance with the portal. You can, base that on the performance of another place, but you can't, it's, it's not the same. You're not trying to just spend money on free agency like you're the New York Mets, right? But that's what Pitt basically did, which is sort of ironic when you think about the Pittsburgh Pirates, <laughs> what's been wrong with that that baseball team since about 1993. But, um, it, you know, it, it, it's a uh, work in progress. I was pretty happy yesterday that making a change would be a three to four year rebuild. I still think it's a rebuild. Like you may get lucky. Some guys have gotten lucky, hit on the right kids. Most of those people that have had success in doing that don't have a lot of academic restrictions or not in a conference. It's the level of the ACC who has come in and won immediately in the ACC um, with a team full of transfers. I think Steve Forbes at Wake Forest is about the only example. And they still, you know, they barely got in the tournament last year. They're, they're out this year. Um, and they're spending NIL money as well. Uh, it's 
especially if you believe Jim Beheim, um, who's pretty, he threw them under the bus as one of the teams he threw under the bus. But there's um, sort of a, a uh, that's sort of something to watch there. I think that um, the understanding is that there's going to be growing pains with whoever you hire. There, unless you hired Rick Pitino, which on Hill Cabrera would never agree to, um, you're going to have growing pains. Um, you know, you, somebody brought up Dennis Gates in Missouri. Missouri was a good program. They had a freaking lottery pick a couple of years ago. Like that's not, again, that was like not a program that had been bad for like, had been basically completely inconsistent and been to one tournament in like 10 years. That was not Missouri basketball. It's it, people keep comparing apples and oranges to things and it, you cannot compare all of those things. It's just a different animal. Um, yeah, I'm going to try to talk to Josh a little bit more at some point. Let's see. My old iPad is not cooperating. Let me switch here to do it on the website. Uh, sorry, bear with me for a minute. <sighs> what type of budget are, is Georgia Tech looking at for head coach and assistants? What openings should we be paying attention to? Again, I think Jay has like something very specific in mind, and as I would imagine he has some terms that he's he's uh, he's been sure about. Jay doesn't strike me as. But for the first time in a long time, Jay strikes me as a guy who is under control and, and actually knows what he's doing. And that's in this kind of situation that's been missing for a while from, from Georgia Tech. What it is Georgia Tech need to be in the middle of Peck then in NIL and ACC? Um, so Josh Pastner told me that 750K was sort of like the floor of where it would get you in like maybe like the top 11. Um, so I would say probably a million and a half of NIL money for basketball. How doable is that? I, you know, you're asking the wrong guy. Like I'm not an expert on NIL. I don't know, you know, um, I'll try to find out more about that as I can, but that's what's going on. What are the attributes JBU is look, J Bad is looking for in an ideal candidate? Did the money get turned on? Um, there's been a lot of support. Right now, there's a lot of support and momentum for Jay, just in general, to do, do his thing, right? He went through a coaching search that was sort of a strange coaching search, but um, because it, I think a lot of it was not public and there were a lot of people speculating and then passing that speculation on to people. If you remember, I was very kind of level-headed and, and – what I was saying the whole time that I thought X, Y, and Z would happen. And that's ultimately what happened. Um, but I was basing it on, on other things. I think Jay keeps things pretty quiet. And I told him, I was like, I've been impressed with how buttoned up he's been able to keep things. Um, you know, what is he looking for? I think he's looking for somebody who can sustainably win. He's the guy that helped bring Nate Oates to Alabama. He knows what it takes to, to build a winning program. And, um, He's going to try to find those attributes. You know, Nate Oates came from Buffalo. He was not like some guy that was at like South Alabama killing it or at UAB or whatever. It was a total left field kind of hire in one way. Um, just a guy who had been successful building a program and building a little bit on the heels of, uh, I think it was Bobby Hurley. Um, and and I just watched them today. They're fun to watch. They have a, you know, a lottery pick and Brandon Miller. They have a really talented team and he's, you know, kind of a character, Nate Oates, but um, they're really fun to watch. So I think that, you know, if he can find his version of that here, I, I think that would be very successful. The, the reality is, like, the program should be more in line with what, you know, like, I'm trying to think, like, who in the ACC. Probably, like, Miami um, has been, like, the last five, six years, like, and less, like, 
Boston College or Wake Forest before Forbes or like it's really gone kind of been really up and down and schizophrenic based on there's just been like no depth of talent um, for for a variety of reasons as I touched on already. And, and you know, that's ultimately I think what got jo- fire, Josh fired too. Um, do, 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 do. Let's see what else. Does it destroy or handicap the portal piece of things? Not really. The portal kids cannot go in until Monday. If you hire, I would say it's extremely likely they're hiring somebody that's playing next week in the tournament. Those people will most likely all be eliminated by that following Sunday. You're a week behind at most. Um, so for a basically two month portal period and no one can enroll in school till June. So I think as long as you have, you know, something in place b- before the sweet 16 weekend, I think you're, you're in good shape. And it certainly sounds like that's the way things are trending. Um, let's see, do, 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 what else? Uh, da, 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 da. Everyone wants to know where the hot tub is. It's over there. Um, did I turn the chat on? Um, da, 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 subscriber. Let's see. Uh, let's see. Can you guys, if you guys want to chat in the chat, I think it should be working. Oh, here it is. I had it on the wrong setting. Sorry, guys. Um, uh, people asking me about Danny Hall. I have no idea what's going on with Danny Hall. That's not really, that's Russell's realm, not mine. But um, I, I did send a joking text with somebody today that, it would be funny if that was like the next thing. I, I really like Danny Hall. I think he's done a hell of a job over time. But someone asked me if there's an email address for Coach Passner. Um, I don't think so. I'm, I'm not making my bed up. Um, you're lucky it's even like that nice. Uh, I usually just tear up all the sheets on the bed. Actually, like that was me attempting to make it up a little bit. Um, yeah, so, you know, as we go on – this is obviously not something that caught me off guard. The story was in the admin already. Um, and I did not write the Josh Passioner has been retained story. Um, I just had the Josh gets fired story. So, you know, I, I had a weird feeling about everything. I had a weird feeling from my interaction with Jay at, at the AC tournament when he could have just been like, hey, brother, stay tuned, whatever. Like, he, like there was just something about it that made me feel like he was, he was, not gonna um, keep them around. I don't know. So um, it, it'll be interesting to see what happens. I think that, um, you know, like I've said on the board over and over again, people have accused me of being, and you know, too much of a homer for Josh or whatever. My thing is like, I want to see Georgia Tech. I want to cover a program that's, that's, driven to be successful and puts a good product on the court. It sucked that the one year that they were really good and the entire time that I've covered them, they've had two years where they were good. Um, The first year with Shump and Favors and Ghani, and they were just poorly coached. And then the the ACC championship year, they were, they were a really good team, but that was a COVID year. It sort of sucked. It was not like a real, it was not as real, as a normal season was. And then, um, you know, I told people, it was like part of why I took this job is I love basketball. I love covering college basketball. I want to see a great product on the court. I think one of the things that um, impressed me when Josh's teams were rolling is they could hang with anybody. And they, they showed that at times this year. But, you know, I think he got caught in the trip. The, the ultimate thing that did him in was – the Ron Bell affected classes, which was like the 2019, 2019, 20 classes. The one that's the Tristan Maxwell, Jordan Mecca, 
and then David Dinko and Ashanti Price classes because those should be his upperclassmen now, and he has like zero rotation guys out of that. Tristan was the only thing close to one. And then you, they haven't developed Mecca, um, and, and Maxwell's played, you know, what, 20 games in three years of that. So I don't know. Can you tell us more about J Bat giving us an atmosphere of competence versus past ADs? So the way I would put this, and I had a great conversation in Greensboro with somebody that knows a lot about Georgia Tech, is um, a lot of people sort of tried to off uh, try to obscure the issues at Georgia Tech or pretend like they weren't issues like finances. Like Mike Bubinski is like, why does everyone keep asking me about money? Or Todd Stansbury being afraid to talk to the media or whatever. Jay has been nothing but like gracious and available. And, and we're on a flight together to Raleigh when Georgia Tech played at Carolina to open ACC play. And Todd would have run away from me, like legit, like Jay and AJ Palmo like came over, like they sat and talked to me in the gate area. Like we talked about a bunch of different stuff. Um, he has like an understanding of, of, uh, of what, needs to be done. I, I made him and Josh laugh after a game at Pitt when Georgia Tech lost. They were both riding an elevator with me and we were talking about how old Pitt was and Josh had said the stat about how they were like older than OKC Thunder and I joked that they were making more money than OKC Thunder and both of them laughed at my joke, which, you know, like just having, like he's a, a sharp guy. He's not Mike Babinski was sort of a classic AD, like a kind of stiff shirt and and was really frustrated by Georgia Tech. I think Todd just was in over his head. I think he's a number two guy, very good at plans and things like that. I think Dan Radakovich was a very good AD, but he was cheap. And his cheapness caught up with him and cost him in football and men's basketball. And his lack of caring about men's basketball is what started this whole avalanche of things that's kind of come to a head now. And so to me, I think that Jay understands this and, and isn't afraid of it, right? And that was the big thing in the 80 search that I heard from people that were involved with it was that they wanted to find someone that was willing to tackle the problems and have an approach to actually fixing it and fixing it long-term and willing to do the dirty work to build it. Not someone that was just looking to jump into this job and then leapfrog to another job or someone that was being um being the being unable to see the vision like unable to have a vision for the different ways you build things like you don't the way i built my website right like i started with like barely any subscribers there was one message board post a day and as you just hammer away at things over and over again and eventually we became we took over as the main person the main site in the market and then eventually we became the biggest site and that's what you have to do. You have to put in it's elbow, you know, elbow, uh, whatever the phrase is. It's hard work. It's not, um, it's not, nothing's easy, especially at Georgia Tech. And that's like the one thing that's been abundantly clear from the day that I started covering the program, from covering, having come over from covering UGA or, you know, even at the time I'm covering up here, covering Alabama in this tournament. There's, it's a different animal than most of those places, and you have to have someone that understands that and is willing to work harder to overcome that. I think Jay has that. I literally know some of the most cynical boosters there are. Like I know people cancel their season tickets and stuff, and Jay got them back on board, and they believe in the guy. And the one thing that my texts were talking to people that you know are, are heavily involved in the program was they actually have faith that he's going to make a good decision here and that the program's in good hands and that Jay will, you know, it's interesting because Jay's going to now own everything, right? It's going to be his a football coach he hired and then a men's basketball coach he hired in his own time. And, and that is very unique for an AD who's been on a job six months and he's going to live and succeed based on how those guys do. So it's really interesting. Um, so that's interesting, you know, getting on Pat Kelsey. I, I don't know a ton about Pat Kelsey. Um, <laughs> the word that someone used, which I thought was funny, is that they called him a lunatic in a good way, that he's quite the character. Um, 
very different from Josh and is a good basketball coach and he's won everywhere he's been and won at difficult places. So if it is Pat, I think that makes a lot of sense. If it's someone else it, you know, it could be a number of the guys I've mentioned on the site, it could be someone else. There may, you know, there are always mystery guys and all this. A short of Bobby Hurley, who I'm, I'd literally like, I'd be done if they hired Bobby Hurley. I'd be like, nope, I'm not covering this. Um, I, I think there are a lot of people out there. Bobby Hurley would be like hiring a even worse Brian Gregory. Um, he actually is less successful than Brian Gregory or Josh Passner was when they got hired. Um, and I can't see a Carolina guy hiring Bobby Hurley at Georgia Tech. Like, there's just no way that that happens. But it's going to be an interesting couple of weeks. Football starts on Monday. Um, that's going to be really interesting. And then um, this was going on. The one other thing that was kind of interesting and probably hurt Josh a little bit is with Brent, there's been a huge bounce back in season ticket sales for football. And I think they probably feel like they can get another bounce too with basketball by hiring a new coach. And that's, you know, something to think about too. I mean, the attendance was abysmal most of the season. Um, it was the worst it's been other than the COVID year when it was, you know, capped at whatever percentage it was. So I think it's going to be interesting. Thinking about non-coaching upgrades, it seems like men's basketball locker room is the biggest one to do. Josh was getting a new locker room, but told the women had to get it first. Yes, that's what happened. Why that hasn't changed, I don't I don't know the story about it. I asked Josh about it one time and he sort of like brushed back on the topic and didn't want to talk about it. So I didn't bring it up again on the record. It's not something I talked to him about off the record, but yeah, they need a locker room. I don't know what that's running these days. Um, you know, that's that would probably be the biggest upgrade that they need. You know, obviously the McCamish is nice, the practice gym's nice. They're still kind of space limited. Um, but th those would be the big things. And obviously the edge where their offices and stuff are is part of the, the future plans as well. Someone saying that the both locker rooms were in the AI 2020 budget, the women's locker room involved structural changes. Okay. Yeah, Bobby Early confirmed. Oh, Bobby Early. Cantankerous. Uh, dude, no thank you. Um, you. can bring Malcolm Mackey to like smack him backwards if he like tried to come in the building. Uh, let me see if there's anything else here. Obviously, yeah, you guys will be watching College of Charleston and, and a few other schools here in the tournament. Um, let's see. Uh, someone asked about buyout money versus hiring more staff. The staff hires for men's basketball were done before um, – were done before Jay Bat ever got here. Like you, you're not hiring an assistant basketball coach. And when they hired Coach Eski, it was the last hire. That was in June, maybe when Rev left. June, July, something like that. It was months before um before Jay Bat got hired as AD. Yes, they are not paying. I mean, the story I'll tell you guys is Charlton Young, who I saw a coach today, actually I watched a little bit of Missouri, Tennessee in person. Charlton Young makes more than Josh's entire three assistants make. And Missouri is the lead assistant in Missouri and the associate head coach. That is a terrible, terrible statement on where Georgia Tech is in terms of spending money on assistants. I talked about when I thought Jay was going to make the move earlier in the video. Are there any college basketball programs where former players get reengaged with school and donate uh, significant amounts of money? Yes, Wake Forest, Chris Paul has donated a lot of money and helped their basketball program quite a bit and has, you know, basically built like an entire basketball facility there along with a few other people. Zelnak is fairly cramped. Da -da. 
uh, Missouri announced extension for Dennis Gates. Yeah. CY is trying to get a head coaching job right now, actually. Um, off of bouncing off of Dennis Gates. Um, I was trying to think I was at another school this year where they had someone brought someone out that cut like the big check for them. Um, big donation. I'm trying to remember what game it was this year. It's one of the road games. They brought out a former player and he had donated a bunch of money. It was a guy who played in the NBA. And I just remember thinking I've literally never seen this at Georgia Tech. Um, but again, that speaks also to the experience that kids have and stuff too. Like it, Georgia Tech is not an easy place to go to school. That was one of the things that came up a lot when I started thinking that they might fire Josh when they were in the nine games kid. I started, it's when I started looking into it and um, it came up a lot. It's just like the academic thing, such a red flag for a lot of these guys. Um, so, you know, but there needs to be engagement. This was a big factor for overall for the athletic program. There's that slipped a little bit um, in the last few years, getting former players to be engaged in football, basketball, baseball does a nice job of it, but just having that level of engagement, getting people donating money, getting people donating time services, you don't necessarily have to donate money. It can be things like mentoring someone or, or making connections to, to make something happen. So, there's a lot of different things that can think can go on. Um, Kelly, give us your funniest passenger story. Um, yeah, Josh is notorious for responding to everyone. Um, I'm trying to think what the funniest Josh story is. Hmm. It's a good question. By the way, I have like a box of. Josh Passner, Bobbleheads, the Face Shield, and the Nell Fortner ones, if uh, anyone wants any. Um, maybe that's what the winner of the JOL Tournament Challenge is going to get sent to them. These two big boxes are in my garage that I thought that um, I would give away at like some speaking engagement this, this summer. Uh, now one of them is like, completely useless. Um, give me a good Josh story. Uh, you know, it's funny. Like the one that makes me laugh right now is um, he sent me a GIF when they beat Syracuse, beat the hell out of Syracuse the other night. And it was, uh, I wonder if I can show it on my phone. Uh, let's see. I'll try to just show you the GIF, not that made me laugh. If you guys can see this, <laughs> Josh had a sense of humor about all of this, despite like how you know tough the job is. He knows he's been around basketball his life. He kind of knew this was always going to be difficult. So, um, They've had guys like uh, Okogi. Obviously, Jared Jack was around the program in a bad way with Daryl LaBerry. Uh, Okogi's been around. I saw Moses this year. I've seen Jose. Um, Bosch has been around. So they have them. Um, yeah, everyone. I knew Josh was in trouble when the other coaches started talking about what a great coach he was. That was what happened to Brian Gregory's last year. Every coach would be like, Brian Gregory's great, you know, Jim Beheim and Leonard Hamilton and whoever, Brad Burnell are like singing the praises of Brian Gregory. I was like, oh, shit. Uh, what do I think's next for Josh? I don't know. He's not really a TV kind of guy. I could see him going and working in the NBA as a scout or an assistant if he can get on somewhere. If Damon Stoudemire gets a job, I could see Josh getting on with him, um, especially if he gets an NBA job. You know, Josh is, was a very successful recruiter. Uh, ironically, he was known as more of a recruiter than a coach at Memphis, and then it sort of flipped a little bit here um, where they were better coached at times but had less talent. 
uh, key Atlanta AAU coach, which we need to hire Mufan Odofia as an assistant coach. I, like you're not hiring him to be your head coach. Uh, you know, I like Mufan. I'd be happy to see him around. Um, but again, you can't get too caught up in hiring people. This is the thing that gets people fired all the time is you hire who you think you got hired to, to get certain kids or getting certain things. I think that's, that's something. Um, I did enjoy Josh's story about sleeping in the car. Um, I kind of knew that one. Uh, you know, a lot of times Josh would call me late after games. He'd call, you know, like midnight because he knew I was kind of up late. He'd give me a call and we'd talk about whatever the game or share thoughts about something or frustration, usually after a loss, actually more than a win. Um, he's always real good about that, talking talking ball and um, – there are a lot of funny, kind of funny stories about that. Um, one of my favorite things about Passner that I remember is we used to do our interviews downstairs and um, in Selnac in the um, right outside where the practice gym is on the back side of the building of the arena, and um, in this kind of like lobby where they had all this like memorabilia and stuff. And invariably showed up with like what I think is the stupidest outfit um, that coaches wear that annoys me on for some granular level, which was he would wear a polo shirt like this and then be wearing like gym shorts or like uh, track pants. And it's like, don't wear a polo and track pants. It's a terrible look. Um, so It'll be interesting to see what happens. You know, people ask me, like, who's getting retained, who doesn't, who knows? No one knows. Josh, Jay Back couldn't tell you right now who's, like, a, you know, BJ Elder or whoever is being retained. I think, you know, ultimately whoever gets hired needs to make their evaluations on their staff and then make those decisions. But I think we're hitting about 50 minutes here, so we're going to wrap up here. Any last questions in the chat? And if not... Um, I'm going to go kind of unwind for the evening because I'm about to be in sort of a hellish situation with spring football starting and um, and a, a coaching search again, second coaching search in four months. Yeah, all the guys are – I mean, Anthony Wilkins is out too. They just haven't – he's the interim coach until they hire a new guy unless someone decides to hire them back. Marquette's very good this year. Georgia Tech had some good L's this year. Um, the Duke team's pretty legit. They lost to um, Marquette was turned out to be a really good team. Um, you know, some of the wins were the Miami win was good. Um, being Georgia actually was a half decent win this year. All right, guys. Well, I will try to do this a little more often now that I'm back off the road. We'll have spring football to talk about. So my guess is that I'm going to do this probably next Friday, Saturday, something like that, because the team's going to practice in football Monday through Friday and then go on break um, for a week. So I'll try to do another video as, as soon, you know, next week and try to get back into the habit of this. And I may put this out as a podcast as well, just for audio for people who aren't into watching videos. But thanks everyone for tuning in. Tell your friends about the website. We're running a promo right now, fifty percent off an annual subscription. The coaches, the code is GT Search twenty three. I tweeted about it. It's for new users only. People haven't used uh, that. Don't screw me by using the promo code now. Like if you have an actual still have a subscription that just cheaps me out of money and we're less than the cost of like a value meal at Chick-fil-A these days. So um, just pay your 10 bucks or hundred dollars a year. And, and I appreciate all of you guys. I know we all argue from time to time on the boards and whatever, but much love and appreciation. And we'll see you guys next week. Thank you.